At 9:45 a.m., Eric Kawaguchi stopped at a flower kiosk and bought a single carnation. She then took a small detour beneath an overpass. A house painter was walking in the opposite direction when he saw a female leg lying by the side of the road. Approximately five minutes had elapsed from when Ari had crossed the street and from when her body was found lying in pieces. What's more, a forensic autopsy indicated she had been dismembered from the inside out. Ari had been staying with a series of boyfriends before taking up with a female roommate named Chio about half a year before her death. When police searched the apartment, they could not find the other woman. The next day, they were alerted by the local emergency room where the roommate had checked in earlier that week. Chio fell in the middle of a crosswalk. She had been rescued before traffic resumed, but had suffered a head injury in the fall. After several interviews, investigators were able to glean a crucial piece of information, the House of Sleep. The House of Sleep was an unusual business. The establishment banned any kind of physical contact or verbal interaction between the client and employee, yet it was censured by the Japanese government and moved headquarters frequently. A typical visit would consist of the girl, dressed in a formal white kimono, laying side by side with the client. The two would face each other, and the client would usually drift off to sleep. The girl was meant to remain awake, ostensibly to offer comfort to the client if they should wake, but former girls would report falling asleep at least once. They often had nightmares of a black fog streaming from their client's mouth, being sucked up by their own breathing that they were helpless to stop. There is no record of the establishment of the House of Sleep. Clientele is selected through several proxies and sign a non-disclosure agreement when they acquire the house's services. Oddly enough, every piece of testimony indicates that no client was ever serviced more than once. Former girls were easier to locate than clientele. They were often reported to hospitals for spontaneous development of narcolepsy. Police found that several girls were the victims of falsely attributed suicide verdicts, having suffered a narcoleptic episode while waiting for a train, or in one case, while swimming. The girls described no real illicit activity, only supporting the client's description of a session, but their contracts offered a different, more mystifying element. The girls were not required to sign a non-disclosure agreement, but were to put their signatures beneath a sumi painting of what was eventually deduced to be a Malaysian tapir. Furthermore, the girls were referred to by staff as Baku. Chio was discharged after three weeks of recovery. She had short-term memory loss for the rest of her life and was no longer able to live unassisted. About Airy, she could offer no helpful information. No ventral paramours, no obsessive clients. Not even what she had been doing that morning. The last thing she had contributed to the investigation was the cryptic phrase, Airy went twice. Mm -hmm.